This video will look at the structure of the lipid molecules that make up membranes and how cholesterol affects their packing and hence their fluidity and melting point. Uh, this is a typical phospholipid molecule. You can see this end of the molecule is very polar. So this is a polar head group and there's two nonpolar tails coming off of it. These are just uh, long alkyl chains um, drawn in a zigzag fashion. And we're going to hone in on this part of this particular chain. We're going to cite down the carbon 1211 bond. In other words, uh, this is another orientation. We're going to cite down this bond. This has just been slightly rotated. And you can see off the back carbon 11, this carbon 10 group is pointed up off the front carbon 12. This carbon 13 group is pointed down. So here's another representation of it here. And you can see when you line it up this way, all the bonds are staggered. If we were to draw a newer projection of this carbon 12 in the front, carbon 11, this red circle in the back, uh, you can see the carbon 10 is pointed up in the back carbon, carbon 13 is pointed down. So all the bonds here are staggered, and these carbon to carbon 10 and carbon 11 are anti to each other. This is the lowest possible energy form of this particular molecule. Now let's look at a space uh, filling model of this. Uh, here's the two phospholipid molecules, and interspersed between them is a molecule cholesterol, which is itself amphiphilic with a slight polar head group here with this OH. I think you can see that this cholesterol, let's say at low temperatures, where these phospholipid chains would like to pack very well, this will help prevent the packing um, because it acts as a contaminant. Uh, so hence it would increase the fluidity of the membrane and effectively decrease the temperature at which the membrane would melt. In other words, the temperature at which it would go from the gel to liquid crystal and phase. Now if we take a membrane that's in the gel phase and move it to the liquid crystalline phase by heating it, what are the changes that occur? Well, the big change, there's no hydrogen bonds to break between these long alkyl chains. Rather, we are going to go from the more stable, lowest energy form in which all the uh, bonds are staggered and two C groups are anti to each other. Uh, we're going to make a Gauss conformation. So that's what we've done here, here and literally introduced the kink into the chain. So uh, again, if we cite down this carbon-1211 bond, and we're starting to do that here, you can see the carbon-13 will be in the Gauss conformation. And uh, like if we just cite directly down the 1211 bond, again, it's over here. Uh, and a Newman projection of that would indicate that this is the carbon-13 on the front, uh, carbon-12 and the carbon-10 on the back, red carbon-11. You can see that they are Gauss to each other, but that's going to provide least 1 k cal per mole of steric interactions, even though all the bonds saying this is higher in energy than the all trans conformation. And I think you can imagine this is really negatively going to affect the packing um, of these particular chains in the little bit box. So now here's the space failing model, model, model in which I've made that kink by making that Gauss conformation at a particular location. Of course, that could happen anywhere. I think you can see that uh, cholesterol, if it was sandwiched between uh, two phospholipid molecules, would probably prevent this kinking from occurring because that really requires significant conformational change, which would be restricted by the presence of cholesterol. So the kinking would occur at higher temperatures when there is more heat energy being applied to the molecule. So if cholesterol was present and sandwiched between two phospholipids, it might help prevent this kicking, kinking of the chain going to the Gauss conformation. Since the higher temperature, cholesterol would inhibit the transformation to the Gauss form, uh, decreasing the fluidity of the membrane and effectively increasing the melting point. Again, that's at higher temperature. Remember we looked at uh, phase changes in water. Uh, we talked about how ice can be converted to liquid water and uh, to gaseous water. And as you raise the temperature, there, and this is axis is heat absorbed. There's a steady increase in heat absorbed until you hit the zero degrees where the phase change occurs. Uh, temperature doesn't increase as uh, basically energy is absorbed to break hydrogen bonds. And then after it's completely liquid, uh, the liquid water increases, uh, adds heat, and eventually get to this phase change when the liquid water goes to gas water. And again, if we took the slope of these points and plotted Q over T here versus the temperature, we got these kinds of phase transitions for water going from uh, gas from the solid to the liquid and then from the liquid to the gas. What does this have to do with membranes? Let's look. Here's a phase trans uh, transformation for a, a membrane going from the gel to the liquid crystalline phase. I see as we raise the temperature, we're plotting uh, basically calories or heat absorbed per degree, Q over T, and this is T. And you can see there's a little mini transition here, but there's a big transition here. And this is again at the melting point where the membrane 
uh, goes from the gel phase in which we have the ACL chains all ordered uh, and packed with no kinks all anti to each other to form here which is hard to see the liquid crystalline phase in which they are kinked uh, they're actually uh, in the gauche phase uh, and if you look at it the membrane is actually compressed now because it doesn't have the same packing so again a temperature is higher than the melting point we have these kinds of transitions and temperatures lower than the melting point we have great packing and the, the effect of cholesterol is obvious from what we talked about it would prevent uh, and inhibit the packing at lower temperatures and it would prevent the transition from the all anti the trans to the gauche conformations at higher temperatures